So in my hotel, and I'm sure in probably all the quarantine hotels, uh, they have people come by every day wearing full protective gear, um, which I'll put a picture right there. And they come in and they uh, take our temperatures, check to see how we're feeling, and then I think on the second and the last day, they, although I'm not sure if it's the same for everyone, they come by and they do a test. So they do the nucleic acid test where they take the swab, stick it up your nose way farther than you think is possible, and swab, and they use that to check to see if you were positive for coronavirus. Um, which is really cool that they're able to do that just because I know in some places test kits are really hard to come by and we've gotten really good at testing in China. So the um, on Thursday morning the people came by to take my temperature and I was running a little bit high so normally I run between 35 and 36 degrees Celsius and I was at around 37.6 typically if it's above 37.3 they take that to mean like a fever even if it's a low-grade fever um, and then they later they took my temperature again and I was uh, 38.5 which is in the West we normally consider 38 to be a fever and so I was above that um, and because of that they suggested that I go get checked out at the hospital uh, and part of me was you know it was my choice whether I wanted to go to the hospital or not and I felt a little bit apprehensive about going to the hospital just because okay well I know that this is going to be number one a cost because I have to pay every day I'm here um, and number two this is you know hospitals can be really dangerous to be in because that's where sick people congregate and if you're trying not to get the disease you know you don't want to go uh, where sick people people are but I also thought okay well I normally don't get fevers so um, like even earlier this year back in January I had a really aggressive bacterial infection um, that was also respiratory that put me in the hospital and I didn't get a fever from that so uh, the fact that I got a fever was concerning for me personally so I decided yeah I would I agree we'll go to the hospital so they transported me in a, an ambulance, which the only other time I'd been in an ambulance was when I was in a car accident my senior year of high school, and I couldn't even see that the ambulance then because I was temporarily blinded. So it was sort of a surreal experience being in the ambulance, and I'll put some footage in of what that ride was like. And so then they take me to the hospital, and. You know, we go through the special, they have blocked off paths that you can go on to determine, you know, if you're just a regular patient or if you are a COVID patient. Um, go and take temperature. I'm wearing an N95 mask that they gave us when we got off, like, got into the bus to the hotel, which I'm actually not sure. It says it's N95. I don't know if it is N95 because I feel like it's too easy to breathe in because I've worn plenty of N95 masks before just for pollution and stuff um but I was wearing a mask and we go and they do the tests um in this little tent which the tests include the sticking the swab up your nose and then they also took some blood which they had done at the hospital or at the airport as well um so I knew kind of what to expect from that and then they were like okay well because you do have a little bit of a cough we want you to go get a chest CT so I went back, paid for them, went and got the chest CT, um, and they said, okay, well, you're going to wait an hour, and then we'll have your results. Um, and after about 45 minutes, they're like, okay, well, actually, it's hospital policy that you need to stay here overnight. Um, and this was an issue for me because I, and I, and I should have planned better on my own part because I just assumed, yeah, it's just going to be a quick trip. I'm not going to bring my laptop or anything. So I had like some books and I had my phone and stuff, but I didn't have my laptop, um, which is where I would do work. And so they brought me, you know, they, they were like, no, we just need you to stay overnight. It's hospital policy. There's really nothing I can do at this point. I'm already there. Uh, so they bring me to this building, Building 5, which I think is specifically for 
um, suspected COVID cases. We go up and they bring me to this room. I'll put another video of the room that I took, um, which is not as nice as the hotel room that I'm in. Um, and of course, you know, I can't complain too much because they are dealing with a really difficult situation. This is a public hospital in Guangzhou, which is one of the biggest, if not the biggest city in the world, I think depending on some figures that you look at. Um, and so it's, they're not trying to make it the Ritz, but I, um, so I got settled in there and they gave me a pair of hospital pajamas, which are super cute, definitely. I actually kind of wanted to take them with me, but they wouldn't let me. Um, and they came by and they did some more testing. Uh, and so with this testing, once again, even though I'd already gotten it done, they did two more nose swabs, they did a throat swab, uh, and then they uh, wanted to do an anal swab because apparently you can test for the coronavirus, virus, which is an upper respiratory infection, through the butthole. And I was actually, I didn't understand what they, what they said there, so I called my Chinese colleague, my native colleague, uh, and I had her on the line and she's translating, you know, like, what they are saying to me and that she just kind of got this awkward moment. She's like, oh, hello, Jessica, uh, my colleague. Um, so they want you to take off your pants and do an anal swab. And I, <laughs> it was a very, very, like, I can't emphasize, like, how uncomfortable that experience is. Um, you know, I'm on the phone with my colleague while this is happening, and I just, I don't want to do it, but of course, what are you going to do? I don't really see the point in doing it, because they already got, they've got my blood, they've got my nose, like, why do they need to do this, too? But, um, I went with it anyway. Uh... <laughs> and then they let me be for the night. Um, and so the next m morning at like 6.30 in the morning, they came in and they took like, this is early, they woke me up and they just took a ton of blood. Like, I think like 10 vials, maybe more of blood. I stopped counting after four because I was really tired. Um, and then they let me go back to sleep and then they came back in and said okay yeah so hopefully everything goes well you're gonna be out tomorrow which was kind of a shock to me because i would told i was told that i would just stay over one night uh so then they were telling me no so you need to be tested 24 again 24 hours after your first test and if both tests come back negative then you can go um so I really didn't have too much of a choice. So luckily, um, my boss was awesome and I was able to, you know, I've been communicating with her and uh, the entire like team throughout this whole experience. And I was supposed to be teaching class in the evening, which I couldn't do. Um, I tried to get people to, from the hotel to like deliver my laptop to me. I was like, even, you know, I'll pay for it and everything. I'll pay for like a, a DD for you to come bring it. Uh, but they would not because I was a biohazard. Um, so I just basically kind of had to be to my boss, like, listen, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't teach this class tonight. And so she's like, okay, we'll talk to the parents. We'll cancel this class tonight. This is kind of an extreme situation. Um, and then we'll try to help somebody, find somebody to help cover your class tomorrow morning. Um, because I wasn't going to get out until a little bit later. Uh, luckily, while I do with offline classes have a really like full schedule we're still getting sort of more into the online um class so my schedule isn't quite as full yet um every week i get more classes and i'm starting to get back to the levels that i was before this was okay because i had a little i only was supposed to teach two classes on saturday so my first class was covered and then i was hopefully going to be out by my second class if everything went well um, and so I did both the tests, I got the results back from both of them, I was negative, and so then I got to get discharged from the hospital, um, which was really exciting and did not happen quick enough, but that's just sort of how it is, and, and that was another challenge, so 
when I got discharged from the hospital, they gave me a new set of like hospital pajamas. They gave me a gown and a new mask and like a little hat thing and they had me put that all on and then I walked about 50 meters to a little tent and they had me take it all off and throw it uh, in a bin. So I don't know exactly what that was for, but <laughs> it was for something, I guess. And then I had to go, um, go through the discharge process and I actually had to rely on my own Chinese because my phone was very, very low. And they got somebody to escort me back to the hotel where I was able to get ready for my class. Um, so it really was quite an experience. I spent two nights in the hospital, um, which I, this is not my first time staying in a Chinese, overnight in a Chinese hospital. I mentioned that earlier in January, I had to stay overnight in the hospital, uh, but I feel like it was a very different experience. Um, they relied a lot more on technology. So when I talked to the doctor, um, I would do, I did a Zoom call with one of the doctors once where they looked at my tests and everything, my blood, and they told me, you know, like, oh, this is a little bit weird, but it's not COVID, so save that at, for a prom for another time, which I will do when there's no longer a global pandemic. Um, and, like, through, like, a speaker in the wall, I was able to talk to the nurses, um, and then when they did come in, they would be wearing that full protective gear, so uh, you know, I got to, I got to know these people, sort of, but I also couldn't tell who was who because all I could see was just some of their eyes. I couldn't see any real features. Um, but everybody was very, very kind, um, despite all of this, and I'm really grateful to, for the work that they were able to do, uh, and how they were able to give me. Um, when I left, they even gave me, like, a little box of sweets, um, and told me that, hey, contact us in the future if you are feeling ill at all. You know, we really want to make sure that you get through this and feel okay. Um, but that was my story. That's how I ended up being quarantined in a Chinese hospital for two days um, in the COVID ward and ended up not having COVID. So, yay! Uh, hopefully, I won't have too many more quarantine stories. Um, I'll finish up my quarantine in the hotel and then be able to go back to Tianjin, but if I do, I'll definitely let you guys know about them.